Strong communities, strong communities. The very best places for you and me are strong communities. When we listen, when we share, things always go better. When we show how much we care, we grow strong together. Strong communities, strong communities. The very best places for you and me are strong communities. Hi, my name is Barry Stewart Mann. And I'm Deborah Strayhorn, and welcome to Storybooks for Strong Communities. In this series of videos, we're going to be sharing with you some of our favorite stories from children's picture books. Stories that show the importance of being in a community, of supporting other people in your community, of having a strong community around you. And if you like them, you can find them at your favorite library. Or if you really want them, you can purchase them at a local bookstore. So now it's time for... Storybooks Story for, for Strong Communities. I'm always fixing something around the house. I have a lot of different tools. I have a hammer for when I need to nail something in. I have a screwdriver and I also have a wrench whenever I need to tighten or loosen something. Say, do you know how to use a hammer? Come on, let's try. Boom, 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 boom. Good job. But I'm always fixing something around the house. But whenever I can't do it, I call my fix-it man, Mr. Hakeem, and he comes to help me out. Well, that reminds me. Mr. Hakeem is kind of like the man in our next story, Mr. Albert the Fix-It Man. And this story is written by Janet Lord and illustrated by Julie Pashkis. Now the story tells us that there was a time when Mr. Albert was always climbing up on a ladder, cleaning his gutters, fixing a loose shingle. Do you think you can climb a ladder? Let's try. Oh boy, there we go, just like Mr. Albert. Well, in the story, it says that Mr. Albert was always helping other people in the community, too. He helped his neighbor, Miss Smith, when the goat got into her garden and ate up all her vegetables. Well, Mr. Albert was right there with his hammer, and he nailed the fence back together so that goat couldn't get in. And then there was Mr. Jones down the street. The story says that Mr. Jones' truck wasn't working. Well, he helped Mr. Albert hoist the truck up, and Mr. Albert got underneath it and replaced some parts, and pretty soon it was running as good as new. And that's not the only person he helped. Well, Mrs. Smith liked to bake, and as he was passing the house, the story says that she broke a cup. Oh, Amy and Mrs. Smith were so upset that that cup was broken. But Mr. Albert said, don't throw it away because he could fix it. And he took out some super glue and he stuck it together. And he told him to wait a couple of days and that cup would be as good as new. So Mrs. Smith invited him and Amy to sit down and have some muffins and some hot tea. And he did because who could pass up muffins and hot tea? I know I can't. And while he was sitting there, the story says that he heard drip, 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 a leaky faucet. <laughs> and you know what he did. He got out his tool chest and went right in and stopped that leaky faucet. He helps other people in the community, too. Miss Akiko needed to hang a line, a clothesline outside, so that her clothes would smell fresh and clean with the morning sun and the evening breeze, and he helped her hang a clothesline from one tree to the next. Yes, the story says Mr. Albert was always helping somebody. I've got a lot of people like that in my community who try to help one another. Well, you know, the story goes that one day when the paper boy stopped at Mr. Albert's house to deliver the paper, Mr. Albert didn't come to the door. So the paper boy knocked on the door 
and he heard Mr. Albert say, come in. Well, that wasn't like Mr. Albert. Mr. Albert was usually up and out of the house early, but the paper boy says he knew something was wrong. And sure enough, Mr. Albert wasn't feeling well. Well, the paper boy told everyone in the community. And you know what they did? The story says that everybody got together and decided to do something nice for Mr. Albert. So Mr. Jones got his truck and he rounded up everybody and everybody brought something. They came to Mr. Albert's house the next day and they knocked on the door. And when he said, come in, he saw all of his neighbors. Mr. S Mrs. Smith had brought some nice minty tea and muffins. Miss Akiko had made a nice cherry pie. The paper boy bought some flowers and everybody bought a smile. And when Mr. Albert saw all of his neighbors standing around his bed who came to check on him for a change, he felt so much better. Well, as the story goes, they said that everybody left, but they left Mr. Albert with a smile on his face. And when he thought about the community that had come together to help him, he was really happy. And it made him feel warm and special. And that's what community does. They come together and they make you feel warm and special. And that is the story of Albert the Fix-It Man. And you can find the story at your local library. Well, that was a terrific story about the Fix-It Man. And it's wonderful how he helped so many people, but then when he needed help, the community stepped in to help him. And that book reminds me that when I was growing up, I had a Fix-It Man in my life. He wasn't called the Fix-It Man. He was called Dad. <laughs> you know, I always liked to help my mom and dad whenever they needed anything, my grandparents as well. You're probably like that too. But my father was very good at fixing things around the house and on our property, and he always needed me to help him. But he didn't call me the fix-it boy or the fix-it kid. He had a different word for me. He called me his gopher. It's not because I looked like a gopher, a little furry animal. No, it's because he would say, go for this and go for that. Go for a hammer, go for a screwdriver, go get some tape, go get me a uh, paper and pencil. I was his gopher. Well, our next story is about someone who is not a fix-it kid, but it is a kid who really helps someone who needs help. It's in this book called The One Day House, written by Julia Durango with illustrations by Bianca Diaz. And this is a story about a boy named Wilson. And in the book, we actually learn things before there are even any words because there are pictures in the beginning of the book around the title page. You might know what that is, the page that tells us the title of the book. But there's a picture that shows this boy walking down the street and he's looking in the window of a shop in his town and he sees a little sign, a piece of paper up there, and he reads it and it says, Build Up Neighbors. And he decides to take one of the little pieces of paper there uh, that has a phone number on it. We don't know anything about it, but we see him running home. And then the story begins, and we see Wilson sitting on the front porch with a neighbor lady named Gigi. And Gigi's wearing a, a house dress, and she's barefoot. And we could see that the house could use a little work. Some of the paint is chipping, and there's a railing on the front railing that's broken. And, and Wilson says, Gigi, one day, I'm going to paint your house bright orange and yellow like the sun. And Gigi smiles and laughs and she says, Oh, Wilson, that's nice, but you're all the sunshine I need. And then from there, over the course of a year, we see Wilson having lots of ideas of things that he will do for Gigi and her house one day. In the summertime, we see him going to the ice cream truck and he tells the ice cream man, One day I'll fix Gigi's windows. And then soon we see it's fall and people are raking up leaves and, and he's talking to Gigi and he says, one day I will fix the stairs outside your house because there was stairway going up. And, and he said, one day I will put a fence around your yard so that you can get a dog for company. And of course she says, oh, Wilson, you're all the company I need. 
and the seasons change and we see it's winter time and there's snow everywhere and there's a snowman on Gigi's front lawn and Wilson is talking either to Gigi or to passersby or to other people. He has an idea. He says to the librarian, one day I will fix Gigi's roof because he knows that there are some problems with her roof and we even see a picture of her roof with, and we see some squirrels or animals up there. And he also says, one day I will fix your chimney. And soon enough, it's springtime. And Wilson still has ideas. He says, one day, Gigi, I will have someone come and tune your piano so you can play it again. And she says, oh, Wilson, that's nice, but you're the song in my heart. And then we see Wilson at school one day. It's the end of the school year. And he has a whole bunch of pictures. These are actually pictures that he's drawn, pictures that the illustrator, Bianca Diaz, has put into the book and shown us all along the way. For every time he had an idea, he drew a picture. And in the pictures, he even put down some words and some measurements or instructions or numbers, like he put calculations of how many pieces of wood he would need to build a new fence for Gigi's yard, or, or what tools exactly would be necessary to tune the piano. So clearly he'd been doing some research. Well, he's showing all of these pictures to his friends in school, and it becomes clear that he's been thinking about this all year long. and He's had all of these ideas. And that's where the thing from the beginning of the book comes back in. Because then we see it's summer again, and he's with Gigi, and he says, Gigi, one day, and he thinks, well, Gigi thinks, and we think that he's going to have another idea of what he can fix in her house. But he says, Gigi, one day is here. And she looks out on the street, and there's a truck that says, build up neighbors. It doesn't say it in the book, but we realize he must have kept that number and called that number. And out of the truck come a lot of people, neighbors, volunteers, members of the community. And they have tools, and they have equipment, and they have wood, and they have paint. And the next thing you know, they are all working. There's a wonderful illustration that shows Gigi surrounded by people working, tuning her piano, building a fence, putting in a garden so that she can grow food, uh, painting her house bright orange and yellow, fixing the windows, fixing the stairs, fixing the railing, fixing the roof, fixing the chimney. And soon everything is done on that one day, and all of those wonderful volunteers leave. And Gigi is alone with Wilson. She's amazed at what he has done for her. And she says, Wilson, one day is the best day of all. And that's the story of the one day house. You can see why it's called the one day house, because he kept saying, one day I'll do this, one day I'll do that. And on that one day, it's almost like she gets a new house. And there's an interesting thing in the back of the book the author, Julia Durango, tells about how she got the idea for the story. She says that she actually has a friend who is also a neighbor in her community and sometimes her writing partner, and his name is Bill Cairns, and that he's a carpenter and that he actually does something like that. He sponsors something called Labor of Love Days, where he gets neighbors from all over their town and all over their county to go to the homes of people who could use a little extra help. The elderly, people who are disabled, who maybe use wheelchairs or can't see or hear very well and can't do the work themselves, or people who work really hard and don't have a lot of money and don't have a lot of time and can't afford to pay for the repairs they need. And these neighbors this community comes in and does just what Wilson arranged for Gigi. They fix up their houses. But it's not only in their community. Julia Durango and her friend, they live in Illinois. But all over the world, people do this. And you might have heard of an organization called Habitat for Humanity. Habitat for Humanity is an organization that is based here in Georgia. And it's an organization that believes that all people deserve a nice, clean, safe, sturdy place to live. And so it's an organization that gathers volunteers and not only fixes up houses, but builds houses for people. And they do that all over the world. So this book, The One Day House, and what Wilson did for Gigi, and the inspiration for the story, and the things like that all around the world are wonderful examples of what happens in strong communities 
communities come together to help people, and in helping, they make themselves and their communities even stronger. Our last story today is also about a community coming together to help. Someone who was a little bit lonely, someone who needed a little help. And uh, this one is actually about an animal, a pet, a cat. You know, I don't know about you, Deborah. Do you have any pets? Yes, I do. I have a Maltese named Rocky and a Poodle Terrier mix named Honey. And Honey is a rescue. Oh, those are both dogs. And yes. I, I have a dog as well. We have a dog that is uh, part Poodle and part, oh, I forget what else, maybe a Terrier too. And her name is Onyx because she has black hair. And Onyx is the name of a black stone. Mm-hmm. Well, I bet some of you might have pets too. You know, or you might see pets in your neighborhood. Well, that, well, our third story now is about an animal, a pet. It's about a cat. And it comes from this wonderful book called Archie Snufflekin's Oliver Valentine Cupcake Tiberius Cat, written by Katie Harnett. And you can see the cat has a lot of names, and there's a very good reason for that. You see, in an ordinary-looking town with townhouses lined up on a street made of bricks, and the street was called Blossom Street, there were different people that lived in different houses, and there was also a cat that lived on the street. It was a very special-looking cat. It had an orange patch around one eye, and it didn't seem to belong to any one house. It would just go from place to place, and everyone seemed to love the cat. Why, in the morning, Mr. Green, who loved to cook, he would see the cat, and he'd fry up a fish for the cat. Well, he had a name for the cat. He called it Archie, and he said, here's your fish, Archie. (coughs) And nearby, in another house, there was Mr. and Mrs. Hoskins. They would sit and have their tea every morning, and the cat would come and snuggle up next to Mrs. Hoskins, and they called the cat Oliver. Why, hello, Oliver. And at another house on Blossom Street, there was Madam Betty. Madam Betty wore beautiful clothing, and she had pictures on the wall of her looking glamorous and lovely. She must have been a model or a movie star, and she had several names. She called him, oh, hello, Snufflekins, or Snookums, or Sweetie Pie, or Cupcake, or sometimes all four. And nearby, there was an artist named Miss Fernandez, and she would invite the cat into her studio, and then she would paint him into her pictures, and she called him Valentine. Now hold still, Valentine. And there were also some bird watchers who would like to go out and watch birds, and they called him Fred, and he would watch the birds with them, and they'd say, oh, look at that one, Fred. And down the block, in another house, there was a man and his son, who both wore dust stars around their heads. A dust star is a special kind of headwear that are worn by men from India called the Sikhs. And they would be out in their garden, and they called him Tiberius. Why, hello there, Tiberius! And there was a little girl who loved to dance. And she would practice her dancing, wearing her tutu. And she had a name because the cat would dance with her. She called him Kitty. Hi there, Kitty. Well, the cat came to all the houses, except there was one house that the cat never visited. And that house was number 11. Because in number 11, there lived a lady named Mrs. Murray. Mrs. Murray lived all alone. Most of the time she sat there just looking out of the window. Sometimes she watched TV. She even knitted. And sometimes she would take a nap. And sometimes she would just sit. And she would rock in her chair. And she even warmed her feet and hands by the nice fire. She lived all alone. And then one day, she heard a knock at the door. Who's there? Package for number 11. And when she opened the door, in came the cat. Oh, my! Meow! 
Hello, cat. Meow. Well, the cat stayed there in number 11 with Mrs. Murray. And in the days that followed, everyone was a little bit surprised. Mr. Green cooked up a fish, but he said, Archie, Archie, I have your fish. And the Hoskins sat there drinking their tea. Oh, I wonder where Oliver is. And Madame Betty, she said, Snufflekins, <laughs> where is Cupcake? Where are you? And, of course, Miss Fernandez said, Well, I guess I won't put Valentine in the painting today. And the bird watchers, looking at their birds, said, hmm, I wonder where Fred could be. And the man and his son, working in their garden, said, Have you seen Tiberius? I haven't seen him. Have you seen him? And the little girl, practicing her dancing, she didn't have anyone. I don't have anyone to dance with me. Where is that sweet little kitty? And after a few days, they all began to worry. And so every one of them made up a little poster with a picture of the cat and the name that they had for the cat. Archie, or Snufflekins, or Oliver, or Tiberius. And soon they were all walking through the neighborhood, calling for him. Fred, Kitty, Tiberius, Oliver. And that little girl with the tutu, she started looking at all of the pictures that everyone had put out. And she said, wait a minute. All of our cats have a little patch around his eye. I think we're all looking for the same cat. And when they compared where they all lived and when they would see the cat, they realized it was true. And then they looked around and realized that there was only one place the cat could be because there was only one house that there was no one representing that house. And that was number 11. And so they went to number 11 and they knocked on the door. Who's there? Um, excuse me, Miss Murray, it's us from around the neighborhood. We're wondering if you've seen a, a little cat with an orange patch around his eyes. He goes by different names. He goes by Archie, um, Snufflekins, Oliver, Valentine, Cupcake, Tiberius. Have you seen him? Why, yes. He's right here. <sighs> He's been here for a few days now, keeping me company. We sit by the window, sometimes we knit, we watch television, and we just have a good time. Sometimes we even take a nap, and we warm our feet and paws right here by the fire. I really think he enjoys being here. I just call him Cat. And everybody realized that this was just the right place for that cat. But they all realized also that they would miss seeing him every day. So they said, Mrs. Murray, do you mind if we come and visit sometimes? Why, of course. And so they did. And after that, instead of being alone in her home all the time, Mrs. Murray had a cat named Cat. And she had lots of visitors all the time. And that's the story from Archie Snufflekins. Oliver Valentine Cupcake Tiberius Cat by Katie Harnett. And it reminds us that sometimes the most unusual things can bring a community together, even if it's just a sweet little cat. But everybody caring, everybody helping is what makes a strong community. Strong communities. Strong communities, the very best places for you and me are strong communities. When we listen, when we share, things always go better. When we show how much we care, we grow strong together. Strong communities, strong communities, the very best places for you and me are strong communities.